The Mutos are the first Gaijutsu's Monster X from Godzilla Final Wars that was seen in the movie screens and the Mutos are Godzilla's first completely original opponents that he faced since the Titanosaurus that appeared in Terror of Mecha Godzilla. Every other enemy of Godzilla has fought since then are either enemies he has fought before or they are clones of him or are derived from him or based on an existing monster. So Legendary went on full creative with the Muto designs and they were a success as they instantly became fan favorites. But since Legendary went AWOL with their life cycle information, we MindQ will present a whole new picture on this missing part conforming to the facts as best as we could, without alienating a creature that is already very mysterious. So what do we know about the Mutos? We have seen four of them till now including the one in the comics Godzilla Aftershock. So there is the male Muto, the female Muto, the Muto Prime and lastly Barbara, the Queen Muto. And all along the way we got to see the spores of these titans and the chrysalis that they were cocooned in as well as miniature female Mutos in many scenes of Godzilla 2014 in the desert in San Francisco as they were encased in soft eggs inside the female and were laid in a large hole. So the question arises if they were laid as eggs so then why did the other two come from spores? And why were all four of these Mutos so very different from each other? So check this theory out. Stage 1 Spores They are the first stage of the Muto life process and like a wasp that lays its eggs, its parasitoid eggs inside another animal, the Muto Prime injects them inside the body of a member of Godzilla species which we now know has a name that is Dagon like the Cthulhu Mythos deity. So these spores slowly and steadily drain the titan's radioactive blood and grow in size. These two spores in fact had been dormant for thousands of years and things suddenly changed in 1999 when they hatched giving way to the second stage of their life cycle. Stage 2 The Larva The two spores gave rise to two hatchlings or larva and both of them have a very different sex, that is a male and a female of course. Uh, the male larva digs its way out from the Philippines and could already swim therefore heading towards the nearest radiation source which is the Janjira nuclear power plant in Japan. The female spore however was still dormant and was taken by the US military to the Yuka Mountain Nuclear Waste Depository in Nevada. So therefore the reason why we didn't see the female larva was that when she hatched she was already in the best nursery humans could provide for her. So both of them cocooned themselves and started to mature to their adult stages. Stage 3 Chrysalis so both of them started to cocoon themselves and all the while slowly feeding on the radiation that was present on the site. The chrysalis of the female wasn't seen in the movie but the male's chrysalis was very clear. It was gigantic in size and was somehow cone shaped but the end was curved inwards and the outer layer seems to look like an exoskeleton with spikes and ribs that had translucent segments which were lit up red from time to time due to excess energy and the male's bioluminescence. The chrysalis was hard and looked like a hellish gateway from which a monster would come out which it did. Stage 4 The Female and Male Adult Stages The Muto's bodies were covered in an iridescent metallic greyish black exoskeleton. They have orangey red eyes, narrowly shaped eyes. As a species the Muto's are sexually dimorphic as there are several notable differences between the males and females. The male Muto has two pairs of forelimbs and a smaller pair on her abdomen and two hindlimbs and is much bigger than the male Muto standing nearly twice the height of the male and being almost as tall as Godzilla himself. The male Muto is similar in appearance except that he is much smaller with a more nimble body and one of the two forelimbs had been modified into his wings which are long, pointed and membranous similar to those of a pterosaur. Both of them possess long, slender, somewhat deer-like hind limbs with flat broad feet ending in two hoof-like toes and they went to San Francisco to mate and lay their eggs. Stage 5 The Queen Younglings in the movie we could see inside the Muto nest uh, that after the female lays her eggs there is this weird sap like substance coming out from the numerous egg sacs that might probably be the protective layer. Now after the Muto eggs are nested they begin to form into various worm or spider like creatures. Now keep in mind that they are totally different from the spores laid by the Muto prime. So there wrapped around the nuclear missile they would feed on the radiation and then they would reach a state of sexual maturity. And this is our theory, they would develop into a new Queen Muto that have the ability to insert spores into other titans. Stage 6 The Queen Muto Muto 3, referred to as the Queen Muto, looks slightly different in appearance to the female 
Uh, unlike her deceased skin, the Queen Muto's exoskeleton is more grey colour instead of black. Her body is covered in scars from past battles and she is also bigger in size than both the other two and with spiky protrusions on her back. It would seem that she is similar to the female but on another level of the life cycle which could lead up to her developing into the next Muto Prime. So here is another one of her theories. She could also possess the ability to inject spores into other titans like the Prime. The official novelization describes her as a six-legged monster although she possesses eight limbs in the movie. And Stage 7, the Muto Prime. This penultimate stage is nearly identical to the two females but it has a hardened outer shell with razor sharp back spires on it, large orange glowing forelimbs as well as several smaller pairs of forelimbs on her chest, with more defined jaws along with larger mandibles. Unlike the other two, Prime walks on four legs instead of six or eight as it appears that some limbs were fused during the process of metamorphosis, which would mean that the Queen Muta will have another stage or a metamorphosis or another cocoon stage that will lead to it hatching into a Muto Prime. So the Muto Prime was much larger than Dagon and Godzilla in 2014 himself, and she had the ability to infect other titans with her spores which would lead up to the next generation of the life cycle. She could very well be a very ancient form of the Queen Muto and that has lived for millions of years and just like how Godzilla could grow in size and have bigger dorsal plates, she too could slowly change in appearance over time. And so with that we come to the end of this video about the life cycle of the Mutos and hope you guys liked it. If you have another theory then put it down in the comment section. Anyways, thanks guys, subscribe and hit that notification bell for regular updates and all that fun.